In this video, I will show you how to format and export your final map product as a PDF using the layout view. Before entering layout view, we have one last item of housekeeping. Expand the mapping group layer in the contents pane, and then expand geo contacts, linear features, and geo units. Notice how they all have a symbology for all other units. We will open the symbology pane for each of these feature classes and delete the all other units symbol, or else they will show up on our legend later on. Once all of these are removed, navigate to the Insert tab on the ribbon. Then click New Layout. You will see a bunch of shortcut icons that specify different paper sizes for your final map product. You can even quickly specify between portrait or landscape orientation. For this demonstration, I will just select a standard 8.5 by 11 inch letter size. Welcome to the layout view. You can quickly navigate between map view, local scene view, and layout view by clicking on these tabs. The first thing we will add to the layout is our map. Under the insert tab, click on the map frame icon up top. Now click on the 1 to 50,000 map icon. Note, whatever map scale or zoom level you are on in the map view is what will show up here. I previously set the map view to 1 to 50,000 because that is what we decided our final publication scale would be. Next, click and drag to draw the map frame. You can use the rulers on the top and sides of the layout view if you need to be mindful of page margins. The map frame is now fixed. To move the map itself within the map frame, we must first right click and press activate. Once activated, we can click and drag the map to move it around. When finished, click on this arrow icon to deactivate. Play around with rescaling the map frame and recentering the map within the map frame until you get it placed where you want on the page layout. To add a grid or graticules to your map, click on Map Frame in the Contents pane to highlight it, then click Grid. Graticules are a network of lines on a map that delineate the geographic coordinates. Essentially, they are showing the degrees of latitude and longitude in the appropriate coordinate system. Open now the grid properties. To manually adjust the grid lines, first uncheck the box that says Automatically Adjust. Also, if you click on the three bars at the top, you can specify between degrees, minutes, seconds, decimal degrees, or degrees, decimal minutes. I prefer decimal degrees. In the components tab, we can change the distance interval between grid lines, ticks, and labels. This part may take a bit of trial and error to get the grid to look nice on your map. Depending on the size of your map and its purpose, typically graticules have a spacing between 2 and 4 inches, or approximately 5 to 10 centimeters. But as long as they don't obscure or distract from the geology, they are probably okay. I will leave you to play around with them, or choose to include them or not. Now, let's add some more map elements. First, let's add a scale bar. Click on the scale bar icon to see all the different options. Once you found one that you like, click and drag where you want the scale bar to be drawn. You can rescale it at any time and it will automatically draw the new scale bar to be accurate with your map. And if you open up the scale bar properties, there are many different options for customizing it to your liking. Next, let's add a north arrow to the map. Click on the north arrow icon to see the different kinds. Again, pick one that you like, and then click and drag to draw it on the layout view. Then move and resize it as needed. Next, let's add a map legend. By default, the legend will show all active datasets and values. Navigate to the legend layer in the contents pane and expand it. Here we can toggle what the legend shows or doesn't show. So here I'm highlighting and removing what I don't want, though you could just as easily toggle the boxes on and off. 
Now highlight the legend layer in the contents pane to show its properties. Here there are many menus and options to customize your legend, including font type, size and spacing, number of columns, legend border, etc. Spend some time looking through all the options and menus and customize it the way you want. Every map needs a title. Click on this icon to add text to your layout view. You can resize the text box to adjust the font size or you can do that in the text properties pane. Often, I will make multiple layout views within a single map project. A good practice to keep them organized is to rename them. In the catalog pane, you will have a specified layouts folder that will store all of your layout views. I will rename this layout to SP underscore map one. Once you are finished adding and arranging your map and map elements in the layout view, we are then ready to export it as a PDF. Navigate to the Share tab at the top of the ribbon. Here you will have a few options. I usually stick to the GeoReference PDF. That way it stores the geospatial data and can be easily imported and referenced in future ARC projects. First, specify a location that you want to export and save the new PDF file to. I will save it here to the SP Tutorial Data folder. You can also adjust the PDF quality here. These are the settings that I usually use, but you can modify them to suit your needs. Once ready, click Export. There you have it, a PDF of your map from ArcPro. You may have noticed that I left some space in the bottom right corner of the PDF. In the next video, I will show you how to make a location context figure in Arc to add to the final map product.